close your eyes. I can just feel this love so strong. good. I'm just telling he's good. Jesus, you're so good. Oh, Jesus, you're so good. You're so good. You're such a good dad. Oh, you're such a good friend. Just do that. Just take a deep breath in. And breathe out. Just tell him he's good. Tell him out loud, you're good, God. You're so good, God. Tell him out loud. Tell him there's nothing that anyone can think or say that can take you, that can stop you from telling him that he's good. Tell him he's good. You're so good, God. You're such a good God. The Lord asked me to speak about emotions tonight. <laughs> Steve phoned me a couple weeks ago and said, Can you preach? I was like, No, absolutely not. And I was like, what would I even talk about? And he was like, well, no one really knows your story. Like, why don't you share your story? And I was like, no. <laughs> um, I felt like God was highlighting emotions as I was prepping just the humanity of Jesus. space for you to just respond to the Lord, however you feel, if you feel like he's doing something in your heart, please don't let what other people are thinking or what you think I'll think stop you, if you feel like you're supposed to get up and raise your hands, do that, if you feel like you're supposed to get on your knees, please do that, because I feel like too often we don't give the Lord what he deserves. Spirit, we thank you that you're here. And we honor you tonight. We honor your presence. We honor you in this space. We thank you that you're good. We thank you that you're good, God. 
just pray that you would touch hearts to not that what, what you say through me would just land on people's hearts. Thank you, Jesus. I thought I'd start by just sharing some of my testimony. I haven't shared it publicly before, except in youth once, actually. <laughs> I'm going to think about it. <laughs> As Steve said, it's, it's been a hard walk, <laughs> a really hard walk, but he's been so good to me through it all. He's been so close to my heart. I don't think I even realized. He was there the whole time. I didn't know it, but I do now. I was, um, I was sexually abused growing up twice by another guy. And I, I remember, oh, I remember the way that I would feel about myself after that. The shame, the pain that sat with me in my heart. There was so much, so much pain. <laughs> As I was growing up um, out of the space, I realized that I was dealing with so many things in my mind, um, so many questions, um, so many, so many unanswered questions. <laughs> um, just so much anger, so much hatred, so much love. I was always told that I was a sensitive child. Stop, stop feeling that. Just grow up. People would always come to me if I was crying or had a bad day at school and I'd share it with a teacher or a friend. Oh, you need a man up. <laughs> You'd be like more like a man. And that ruined me. It really did. It did wonders for my sexuality. <laughs> I grew up um, very much attracted to men. It's very confusing for me. <laughs> I didn't know why. I didn't know how. I read in the Bible that it wasn't good. And they spoke about it at church and it wasn't good. But it was there. <laughs> what do you do with that? What is a seven, eight-year-old do with that. I didn't feel safe to speak about that to anyone. It was such a taboo topic. You don't speak about it to your friends because, oh, what if you're attracted to me? There was so much, so much chaos in my head. And gender stereotypes. <laughs> Oh, you don't play rugby? <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> um, I don't like getting beat up on the field, <laughs> actually. <laughs> thank you, but no thank you. <laughs> so instead, I chose to ride horses, and I felt free, and I felt safe. People said that I was gay, <laughs> but I was safe. I love musical theater. I still do. Oh, you're so gay. <laughs> That's so gay. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> I didn't know that. And I, blew up, I grew up believing so many lies. Oh, so many lies. No, you can't feel that. You can't, you can't think that. You can't be sad. Grow up. You can't be angry. Get over it. The Lord doesn't like anger. The Lord just wants you to be happy. Don't be angry. Ew. And I was like, but I'm feeling angry and I don't know what to do with all of that. And I started numbing my pain as much as I could. I would, in high school, I started drinking. I 
started watching pornography. I, was, I started cutting myself. I was so afraid of what it would look like to feel everything that was inside of me. So afraid to let that actually express itself, to let it be something. And I'd have days where my poor family <laughs> just honor them. I would blow up and it would be fits of rage. I'd be so angry with them. And I'd scream and shout and call them names. And I'd chase them away from me because no, I'm not, I'm not worthy of you loving me. I'm not worthy of you being my friend. Who would want to? I'm not crying because it's sore. I'm crying because he's really good. <laughs> I was 17. I remember the one day I was just done. I couldn't do it anymore. We were driving home from a friend's house. I just opened the door and threw myself out. I was done. I just said, no, I can't. I survived. <laughs> Thanks, God. <laughs> it's a really big turning point in my life. My parents obviously knew there was something wrong. <laughs> open us up for conversations powerful conversations I've got really good parents I just want to honor them now I've got really really good parents they love big I was head boy in my trick. <laughs> Should not have been head boy. <laughs> I was not, not in the right mental space for that. I was head boy. I was in the school play. Found all my identity in my academics, so pushed hard, way too hard. I got ducks. <laughs> it's not worth it at all. I don't think anyone's cared <laughs> since then. <laughs> I was busy, I was busy. I did everything I could to keep myself busy, to not face what was actually happening in my heart, to not face the reality of life, because life sucks sometimes, and it's okay. In 2019, I had, it was my first year out of school, I had a crazy encounter with the Lord at my friend's 21st, <laughs> after drinking way too much, and he met me there, he met me there, because he does, he always meets us there. I remember having this dream in my heart to be this amazing, fiery, revivalist Christian. <laughs> but I didn't know how. And I didn't feel like I could. I didn't feel like I had space to be that because of, because of my sexual identity that I had adopted. Because that's how it goes. We actually choose. becomes more filled with lies than we can imagine and so we stop reading the Bible the book of truth <laughs> I ended up going to BSSM first year in 2019 picturing this beautiful Christian Hogwarts you go and everything becomes good. <laughs> everything becomes great. And then it didn't. And I was like, crap. <laughs> I'm on the other side of the world. <laughs> away from my friends and family. And life sucks a lot. The dollar sucks. <laughs> I have no money. <laughs> it was really hard. 
really, really hard. Then he met me there. He saw me in my weakness. He saw me in my pain. And he sat there. Well, he sat for a long time. I didn't even know. always thought that I had to climb out of the pit to meet Jesus, that I had to climb up the ladder. <laughs> but he was there. <laughs> he was in the pit. The Lord started to work in my heart in first year. I remember moments of extreme pain, being released in deliverance and in worship and in prophetic sessions with our, our groups and just just time to really lay it all down because that's what it is that's what it's about <laughs> we get to lay it down for him and we get to see him move when we do that and he started unraveling things but when you're when you're wrapped up in so many chains and you're spinning you, you sometimes see the same thing again and I was always like what the heck why am I seeing this again why am I feeling this again? I didn't realize that it was with new perspective every time. It was with new degrees of freedom, new new mindsets and new new patterns in my head that I that have been formed through through encounter with the Lord. sitting in a hot tub and reading they were t- my friends were talking about COVID I was like don't be dumb <laughs> it's in China we're not going to get it <laughs> and then they cancelled our mission trips <laughs> because of COVID and all of a sudden people were going home early from school like going back to their countries in March school was supposed to finish in May and I was like no this isn't how it's supposed to be this is not what it's meant to look like phone call with my mom my grandpa was really sick really really sick it was either I come home and see him or I don't come home because the flights were cancelled so I went home and I quarantined for two weeks and we got all our affidavits and we got to spend the most beautiful week with my grandpa it was beautiful But the Lord was there. He was there. My grandpa passed away and, and we were all together that night. I remember the worship music was playing. He was there. coming out of that and feeling like I just couldn't couldn't handle the emotions anymore again <laughs> it's funny how that happens a lot when you're an emotional person and you've been raised to believe that those emotions aren't good you just stuff them down <laughs> and they, they come up a bit in, in first year and all of a sudden it was like no grief no I won't feel you I'm too strong I'm too prideful I won't I'll cry and I mourn that I'm not going to feel your grief. I'm not going to feel your anger. I'm not going to let that show. I had moments of outbursts in my car, <laughs> screaming and shouting. And then I was around people. I was like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. And I wasn't. <laughs> this part may sound dumb, but my dog died a year later. It was really hard. I had it for 10 years. She sat outside my room all the time. She sat in my room. I'd be weeping on the floor and she'd be there. Nope, you can't grieve that. You can't feel that anger. You can't feel that sadness. 
keep it down, keep it down, keep it down. <laughs> like a ticking time bomb. <laughs> and the riots happened. I was really scared. I was scared about my family. I was scared about not having food. <laughs> We all felt that in some way. Um, you know, fear, no. The Bible says, do not fear, so I will not let you even come into my life. No. <laughs> Sadness, no. Anger, no. I won't let you come. You're done. I'm not feeling you. I was so dumb. <laughs> but I didn't know any better. I went to second year. Which was one of the hardest years of my entire life. <laughs> I was so excited to go back and see my friends be surrounded by people who are just laying their lives down for Jesus. It's a beautiful space, a really beautiful space. that I was throwing myself into one of the most chaotic environments that I could have. <laughs> People getting delivered over here, laughing because they've been filled with the Holy Spirit, beautiful, weeping, wailing, loud music, full schedules. Your second year is you're on the ministry team now. It's beautiful. It's great. I love it. <laughs> it's the best and worst year of my life. <laughs> And I know that I, even now I look back, I'm so grateful that I did it. I'm so grateful that I went. But I didn't let myself feel. I didn't let myself feel the sadness of saying goodbye to friends and family again. I just stuffed it all down. <laughs> I got very good at it. I saw this, I feel like I did it. It's just, I saw this meme the other day. <laughs> like me brings up something that happened therapist cool can we unpack that me no thanks I spent quite a long time packing it quite nice and neat I was like yeah <laughs> that was me I spent so much time packing <laughs> it was one night in December no November, October, November last year, we lived on a very busy street, and these cars would, would drag race up and down the street. It was so frustrating. We'd get to like 3 a.m., and it was like, ba 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 ba, like loud. <laughs> it's like, cool. <laughs> and I woke up the one night to that, and instantly I was taken back into our lounge the first night that the riot started. I could hear the gunshots going off right by our house. You could hear the bombs, you could hear the people screaming and shouting, and it was terrible. It was horrible. And every single night, the cars would backfire after that night, and I would wake up in this state. My poor roommate. <laughs> He'd walk in, and I'd be asleep, and I'd freak out, start screaming, lose my mind, because there's someone in my room. My roommate, he's just trying to go to bed. <laughs> He was very gracious, <laughs> very kind. And by the time I got to the end of that winter break, so beginning of January, I realized that I was just not okay. I was, I was so depressed. I was sleeping more than I'd ever slept in my life. I would go to bed at like, 6, 7 p.m. and wake up at like 1 o'clock the next day. Fine. Very easy for me. <laughs> Eat food and get back into bed and watch series. It was all I could do. But I was so scared of telling people. I was so scared of being real with people because what would they think? I'm a BSSM second year student. And I had to really learn that it's not all about being this fiery student, but it's just about being a son. 
just about being a son, just laying all that down. No one cares. <laughs> no one cares. It's not about me. It's about him. I went to my pastor. We, the school year is split up into groups of like 67 people, and we each have a revival group pastor, and it's beautiful. It's fun. And I, uh, I went to her and I just cried and cried and cried and cried because I felt like such a failure. Everything I'd ever dealt with, everything that I'd found freedom in was back and I couldn't get away from it. I was like, what? No, <laughs> this isn't how it goes. I'm free and then I'm done. Bye. I just live life. <laughs> and that wasn't happening for me and I was so confused. Didn't feel like I was worthy of being in the environment. I remember telling my mom the one day, badass bombs, I'm packing my bag and I'm coming home, I'm done, I can't. And she was like, "Uh -uh. (laughs) uh-uh, no. I'm so glad she did. She was very firm on it. And I was a little bit peed off because I was like, why don't you get it? I'm coming home. (laughs) She said, no, we're staying. God's called you for such a time as this. He has a plan. He's there. He's moving. He's working in your heart. All my triggers were being pushed in so many ways. I was so triggered. I'd walk into school and be like, oh, can you stop? Can you not come say hello to me right now? I'm not okay. trying to love me. I remember the one day during worship, I went up to my pastor again. She was also very kind and gracious. And I just started crying and crying and crying again. And she sat with me on the floor. I was just lying on the floor, my face down, weeping, wailing. Couldn't stop. But she spoke to me about Christ and me, the hope and glory. She reminded me that he's the one who holds everything together, not me. He's the one who does all the all the holding. Why am I trying so hard? <laughs> Stop wasting your breath, Rowan. You can't make yourself better. <laughs> Only he can do it. Why don't you know that? Why don't why aren't you seeing that? Only he can do it. reminded me that he reminded me that we were processing things in layers that in his kindness he had had opened up small windows of pain at a time let's do this today together let's do it come let's sit in the mud together and do it cool you're doing really well let's chill for a bit Oh, oh wow that was a trigger let's do that like let's lean into that now got a lot of pain you still haven't felt come let's feel it cry 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 and <laughs> did <laughs> a lot all I really needed to do was recognize that he was there he was there the whole time sitting in the mud weeping the whole time what an honor that in my pursuit of freedom and wholeness, I'd completely neglected my body the right to feel. The God-given right to feel. The Jesus-modeled right to feel. He was so human in the most beautiful way. Let me read to you out of Hebrews. Quick little notes so that I didn't search and now open the wrong one. <laughs> Cool. 
Jesus. Hebrews 2 verse 17. For this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. He felt it all. (laughs) Matthew 26. Jesus is in Gethsemane. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, my father, If it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. He felt. Strong's Concordance looks at the original words in Greek. That word overwhelmed this context um, was used to describe times where people would become so overcome with emotion that they would die. Okay. Which verse Jesus is in? I can feel. I can give it to God. He fell. (laughs) Same. (laughs) He fell face first to the ground. Yep. It's used also in in Greek history to describe the motion of those overcome by astonishment and grief. (laughs) He felt. In John 11... Verse 33. I'm not going to read the whole section because it's actually really long. It's Jesus is comforting Lazarus' sisters. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and in troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. For historical context, this in this time, death was huge. Death was not something that was taken lightly. By the time that Jesus had come, it had already been four days. It says, um, I was doing some research, after eight hours, Lazarus would have been in that tomb already. He would have been carried by members of the community, weeping and wailing. He would have been wrapped in so much bandage, so much. He would have been washed a number of times, kissed by his family members, laid in the tomb. Jesus went in (laughs) and he wept. The original word for wept describes an act of wailing audibly or to howl in a liturgical fashion, to lament and give verbal expression to your grief. Jesus wept. It wasn't just tears. It was wailing and crying. His heart was breaking. 
for someone that he knew he was about to raise from the dead. He felt. He empathized with the people around him. He felt pain in his own heart. He felt it all. He is such a good man. I remember reading this and feeling so much permission to feel. <laughs> oh, okay. I can feel. One of my classes in BSSM is called Head to Heart. It's beautiful. It's powerful. Um, it speaks a lot about emotion. It's all about emotion, really. And they describe emotion as as things put inside of us to alert us to what's happening. And they're all good. We get to take it to Jesus, lay it down at his feet. See his face. As he smiles upon us. (laughs) As he cries with us. brains are designed, scientifically designed to feel emotions. He did that on purpose. In his creative process and creative brilliance, he said, that brain needs to feel. (laughs) Thank goodness. We are not meant to be robots. the Bible in Isaiah do not fear we're told not to fear so many times and yes don't fear but then we do feel fear it's like hmm, what in that context it's the same word fear that was used When Adam in Genesis says, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid. So I hid. Don't hide. Don't shove it down. Don't hide from him. I firmly believe that when we take our emotions to the Lord, they're all good. in a revival group and there was this beautiful lady walking around the room repeating the the scripture verse rejoice in the Lord always I say it again rejoice a very special lady she was going to each each person in the room and, and declaring it over them speaking it over them and I was like no don't you dare come to me please I'm not not here for this I just came because I couldn't get another absence (laughs) it's real (laughs) she came up to me and she took my hand and she led me into the middle of the room and I was like (laughs) stop go away I'm done I said no and she started dancing with me and I was like no. <laughs> I just started crying and crying and crying. And then I started laughing. And I felt the joy of the Lord. I felt it so many times before, but I'd never looked at it as my strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. <laughs> That's my strength. That's what I use to get through. (laughs) That's what I partner with. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I laughed and I laughed and I laughed. And the Holy Spirit fell on me. I've never felt before. 
I had like electricity going through my body. And I flew across the room. I landed on the ground and I was wailing and laughing at the same time. <laughs> How does that even happen? <laughs> I was fully delivered of something. <laughs> I was there for ages. <laughs> it was beautiful. I got to school the next week and I was like, hi. <laughs> they were like, hello. <laughs> What happened? I was like, God, it's the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm like, yeah. If I could summarize what I'm wanting to say to three, three things. So gross. I hate it when people sniff into the mouth. to give everyone in this room permission to feel. As I was prepping this week, I was sitting at my desk. I was praying, praying that the right people would be here. Praying that the Holy Spirit would lead people here that needed to hear this, that needed to feel this. I saw this picture of these these damn walls, damn walls. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> In people's hearts, full, full, full to the brim. And the walls were thick, and they were big. And I saw the Lord. He took this big hammer and he just went, bah! water just started flowing through and the rivers were running and the, the trees on the side of the rivers were able to grow. The plants had flowers. I feel like there are people in this room that haven't allowed themselves to feel emotion. We've had to show face, be this amazing, strong person. Who said that you're not amazing if you cry? Who said you're not amazing if you're scared? <laughs> I cry all the time, all the time. <laughs> and I can't not, he's too good. I'm a feeler, I feel big things. Walk into a room, oh, I feel it. <laughs> There's so many people who won't, especially in this environment, in our, in our culture. No, don't feel, ugh, man up, grow up. It's not okay. It's so toxic. We're called to feel. We're called to muddle Jesus. He felt. He read it to you. He felt. The second thing that I felt to say was that it's okay if you're on a journey. It's okay. If you feel like you're in a dark space and it's the 10th time you've been in this dark space, it's okay. He's here. I saw a picture of us all walking on this road. We're in the mud. It sucks. And the Lord's sitting here with us. We get up and we dust ourselves off and then we walk and it's like, oh, the mud again. <laughs> We're not over there. We're not in that mud. We're here. He's here. He's with us. journey looks like pursuing his heart. 
we can't be more focused on the, the concept of breakthrough than we are on the King who gives us breakthrough. Breakthrough is not a badge that we just put on once we did this or once we didn't do this, that we get to polish and show off to the world. Breakthrough is a relationship with the King. No one can take it away from you. No one can take that away from you. What you've been through with God, no one and nothing can take you that away from you. Breakthrough looks like allowing him into our decisions. <laughs> and sometimes that's really hard and really scary. Breakthrough looks like hearing his voice over our lives, reading the Bible. I always forgot about that one. <laughs> it's so important. <laughs> in a book it's who he is when we align ourselves with, our, with his word we start to think like him we start to look like him it's John 15 oh I love it it's my favorite I wasn't going to read it I'm going to read it I love it so much it's like all in the land with big lands it's so important guys I am the true vine. Oh, I can't even see because I scribbled over it so much. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it would be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. <laughs> remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. It must remain in the vine. We can't do it by ourselves. We can't. That leads me to my third point is he's there. I've said it a hundred times tonight. He's there the whole time. He's there in the fire. He's there in the flames. He's there when the water is that big and he's there when we're in a little puddle. He's there when the road is nice and paved and beautiful and he's there when we're, I don't know, like Mount Everest. He's there all the time. All the time. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because he's there. Because you are with me. Such an important part of that sentence. And I nearly forgot to read it. <laughs> because you are with me. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. I will not hide, I will not run, I will not restrict myself, I won't act out. Yeah. Romans 8.38, it's one of my favorite verses ever. separate us from his love. Nothing. I want to read the full verse. It's always better when it's the whole thing. I'm in a bigger Bible. Bigger letters, not... <laughs> it's literally highlighted. <laughs> um, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in, in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
I am convinced. I'm convinced. Nothing. I'm convinced that nothing will separate you from the love of Jesus. Nothing. No thought, no emotion. Try to feel it. It might take you closer. The other day I was, we were on worship and it was so fun. We, were, we did Lion. It was cool that Caleb did that tonight. It was powerful. It's such a powerful song. He's moving in hearts through that song. I remember feeling my, my brother and I were leading together and it was really cool, really special, really special to, to advance the kingdom with him at my side and to do the same for him. It's just really special. <laughs> I felt this heat come over my body. It wasn't hot cold actually I remember I felt this heat I was sweating I hadn't even been like running around it was I wasn't doing much <laughs> but I felt this I was like whoa okay God this must be you because there was this pressure on the back of my head I was holding so tight it was like a hand squeezing the Lord he's there he's hand over my life he's there life sucks he's there life's great he's there yay thanks God oh he's so good my friend sent me a message the next day Dale I was just praying for you and I felt like I should go look in the Passion Translation at Hebrew, Hebrews, oh, no, I forgot what it was, Hebrews 13. I will not loosen my grip on your life. He's there. He's always there. And his grip is so firm. He's so firm with us. He holds on to us so tightly. There's nothing that we can do. There's nothing that we can think or say or feel that can separate us from his grip. He's there. 